that whole plasma table fired up. We got our workstation here on our new workbench and she's full of crust. We got to get this out of here. Uh, believe it or not, we only did a few sample cuts and just all this chunky stuff is what's left. So we're going to clean her out and then get some cooling slash cutting fluid back in there and hopefully we can leave that in there. We also need to adjust the feet since we moved it in the shop. She's a little not level. I was going to take the slats out but I think I can lift this whole whole set out. That's way easier. Now she's far from perfect, but a whole lot better than what she was. Got all that gunk out of there. Uh, we still need to level the table, and then we got in a bucket over there some special, supposedly non-toxic uh, cutting fluid for the table. That's well, really close. I didn't really do anything. Looks like we need to. Come on. Need to bring. This side down or this side up. And then on this one, we need to bring basically that back corner back there needs to come up. Precision level here says it's close enough. Uh, really, all we care about, I mean, you want it to be relatively level, but right now, all I care about is that it's level enough so our cutting fluid doesn't lean to one side or spill over or make a big mess. So I think we're good to go. Let's get our cutting fluid and figure out how we're supposed to mix that. Uh, of course, make sure our drain plug is in. This is a special plasma cutting fluid that's supposedly environmentally safe. Uh, made in Canada, had some import that we had to do to get it. Water-based, I don't know if you can read any of that. Stir before use, da da da. 20 parts water, one part green clean. So, uh, I have to figure out how much this tray holds, but so 20 to one water to green clean. Try uh, shaking this thing up. Ah, this is getting heavy. Okay. Maybe we'll roll it around on the floor a little bit too. be good enough. I can believe what the old interweb says. It says 16-ish gallons maybe full. So we want to run less than that and a lot of people were saying 12. So we're going to start with 12. Divide 12 by 20. That's 5 eighths of a gallon roughly of the cutting fluid solution. So I don't know. Let's put like a gallon-ish give or take of the bucket in and then We'll start putting in water by the five gallon bucket. Two, three, four, and then the top five. How many people have ever opened one of these and poured it without making a big mess? We're gonna try it. short of a whole gallon but it says we only need five eighths anyways really isn't that bad from a smell perspective right now it smells a lot like uh reminds me a lot of simple green right now so let's go get our water and we'll kind of splash it around and mix it up It's 
So that's about it's about 10 to 11 somewhere in there gallons and gives it about an inch down from the top I think maybe I'll get just a little bit more and we'll raise it up just a little bit we don't get it too tall because it'll just splatter out all over still need to work out a storage solution for our stock material here we picked up some drops and uh, some specially cut sheets from our local fab shop they were able to get it a whole lot cheaper than what we can buy a single piece for we picked this up and then some miscellaneous blanks behind us of thicker material. We need to find a way to store this better. I know a lot of people work on these tables and they put this custom like drainage tank system underneath there. But for us in this confined space, storing the material on a skid underneath the table actually saves a lot of space. So I don't know if we're going to deviate from this. Right now it works pretty good uh, other than trying to get it out. This is the first time we're going to try this. Let's see how it goes. Worked really good. Uh, but again, we're only working with uh, 14 gauge here. Thicker pieces might be of a problem. We got some 11 gauge down there. We'll try eventually, uh, but Right now, that, that was pretty, pretty handy. You manipulate the torch around where you want the zero to be, and then you hit zero work axis, and that will move the start point and the zero point of your program. So we're gonna try to cut it in this very lower right-hand corner. Just making sure it's still within the soft limits. We're gonna cut us over here. Let's get the torch hooked up. Let's get her plugged in with the air and see what she's gonna do. She's gonna run her up 50, up 30 PSI air. Let's see what's gonna happen. This is the first cut since we relocated the machine. Looks like we missed a cut up here. So we got a spot right around in here that didn't make it all the way out. That's not supposed to be there.
Now it's not supposed to be all sloppy jalopy like that. You gotta cut up, adjust our program for those slots. Round two. Higher air pressure and we tried to adjust the cut path for the opposite side of the line. We'll see how that does. May have to adjust the geometry. Third time's a charm. Let her rip. The main goal here is to get these right off the table, get them to interlock nicely so you can take them apart, put them back together. Adjusted the profile, got to line the hole up. Perfect, that's exactly what we needed. We just want 10 thousandths more. We get those edges cleaned up and that'll go together like butter. I think. Too loose isn't good, too tight isn't good. That's just about right. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Goes together, comes apart really nice. Got a fun little project here. I'm gonna try to eat up some of the dead spaces in between the Christmas trees just to ease up this material.
No, we lost her in the water. So I have to do a little fishing. There she is. Let's see if it's gonna do what we're supposed to do. So this is supposed to be an M12 battery holder. And these slots here are just to fold it up. I'm gonna try to bench fold this up and then we got two uh, holes for mounting screws. Just in time for Christmas, we got the letter J denoted Christmas tree. We have the star on top Christmas tree. And the nice thing about these when Christmas is over, They stow nice and flat. Obviously same with the lettered top. Nice and flat. And then you got yourself a Christmas tree Christmas time. You also got the nifty M12 battery holder. We're gonna give this as a Christmas present. Just came just in time. Turned out pretty good. Uh, the holes I'm not happy with, but once you put the screws in it to mount it to something you won't see. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to make some more iterations of this. This file I copied off of a free file share software. I'll put a link down in the description. And the Christmas trees were a purchase from Etsy. If you want those, you can get them off Etsy. We had a fun time here playing with the plasma table, learning a little bit more about the software side of things. It can get a little bit complicated, a little bit tricky, but I think we're starting to get the hang of it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Merry Christmas.